How's it going today? Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers, and uh, we're going to do something a little different today. Grab a drink, sit down. This is going to be a little bit detailed, maybe a little bit more than you're used to seeing out of us here. Um, do you know who Dave Ramsey is? Yeah, yeah, probably heard of him. If you haven't heard of Dave Ramsey, he's a pretty popular financial guru, does a lot of great work out there. And um, I always say, you know, how can you give somebody a hard time who's trying to motivate people to do right by their dough? right? He gives a lot of advice. A lot of it's free, right? Uh, but he gets a lot of grief. And I get that some of that comes from, you know, he's just super popular. It's like, you know, politician, right? Half the people are going to hate you. Half the people are going to love you. But uh, we wanted to focus on some of the things that he says today and see if we could share the data with you and use this more of as an experiment to work through together versus me just shoving a bunch of information down your throat and trying to say one thing over the other. Uh, well, here we go. If you follow Dave Ramsey or have ever heard of him before, you know he talks about the four mutual funds that he thinks you should invest in. Uh, aggressive growth, growth, growth in income, and international. And so I see funds all day long. I look at every one of our customers, 401ks, 403bs, whatever it is. I'm happy to help with any of that stuff. And so I've seen a lot of these funds, and that always rang in the back of my head where people say, you can't make 12%. That's horrible, Mr. Ramsey. You're giving bad advice. I mean, I, I see the comments. I've even heard him take calls from him. While I don't follow him, like, directly all the time, um, I just think it's kind of unfair. So we set out to say, could we study every mutual fund? Is that even possible? There are 66,375 mutual funds out there. Could we somehow filter them down and see if we could replicate the performance? And so if I miss something here or you think I can improve on something, be nice, but leave a comment. We can always adjust and kind of go along as we go, but I want to share with you what I got so you can make the decisions that you want to make and uh, go from there. So uh, when we thought about this, we said it was very important that we share it in a way where it's as factual as possible. In fact, it's just as factual, right? We can't say as possible. We have no room for error here. I don't want this to be seen as discrediting somebody or giving somebody a hard time. I support the guy. I support all the financial gurus. I was more of a uh, Bruce Williams guy growing up, so I missed out on the Dave Ramsey thing. But um, I, I want to find a way to sort of support everybody here and kind of motivate this. So uh, you ready? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so bear with me a little bit. I'm going to be sliding uh, some things around. I'll be showing you a lot of information. But the first thing we wanted to do was say, can we grab the data of every single mutual fund out there? Yes, we can. Number two, if someone were to take his advice and go find an aggressive growth fund, go find an international fund, how would they find it? And how could they be 100% sure that they chose an aggressive growth fund? I don't recall a time where Dave Ramsey said, buy the Fidelity XYZ fund and that's my aggressive growth fund. I, maybe it exists. If it does, let's study it. We'll work on it. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to verify that each one of these funds was actually in the category that he suggests. So here we go. We're going to start with aggressive growth. First thing we did is we loaded up 66,375 different funds that we could find. Uh, these are all of them, actually, not that we could find. This is everything. We then said the fund's prospectus has to say that its objective is aggressive growth. If it says that its objective is growth and in income, get rid of it. If it says its objective is currency related, get rid of it, right? If it's commodity based, get rid of it. It has to say that its objective is aggressive growth. So we were able to narrow down from 66,375 to 213 results. That's a lot of results. We don't have time to go through all of those. So we said, it would make sense that somebody would not choose a fund that's only five years old. Mr. Ramsey's been at this for a long time. So chances are the funds he's talking about have been around for some period of time. We chose 20 years and we said it's got to give us enough data to really put something impressive in front of you. So we went through and we said filter out any of them that are younger than 20 years. Don't even want to mess with them. We just want the, the, the existing sort of funds that have been out there. And that filtered it all the way down to 36 results. Down here at the bottom, you're seeing a list of all these funds here. And we said, okay, fees are going to be important. We have to factor the fees in there because I know he talks about having loaded, front-loaded uh, funds there, which I'm 100% against because I don't know of any front-loaded fund that you pay the load and then you're done. There's no expense after that, at, which is the way it should be if you're paying a, a fee up front. I, we couldn't find any. So uh, anyways, what we said is, okay, we want to know that it's definitely been around for at least 20 years. So right here, you're seeing years since inception. We want to know the entire all-time return of this fund. We'll do the rest of the math for you there. And we wanted to know any fees that may be involved with this fund. So that's the first one. 
So we went through, that's aggressive growth. I'm gonna to get to the sheet in a moment here. We then looked over at growth. This was a little bit more difficult because growth funds have a tendency to get a little off track and maybe not even available to some of you guys. So we said, okay, these funds have to be American based uh, where we can actually go buy them, right? They can't have any sort of oddball effects there. You can see everything that we worked out. Obviously fixed income, we want nothing to do. We had to do this because um, it wouldn't filter through everything we want us. So we had to actually go through and be specific and say, get rid of commodity funds, get rid of bond funds, money market funds, and things like that. Otherwise, it got put on our list. So we went from 66,375 all the way down here to about 4,000. We said, okay, we, we can't study 4,000 funds. So please show us only the funds 20 years uh, old or older. That got us down to 891. Since that was a lot, we said, okay, we're not gonna pick the underperforming funds. That's not fair. We can't just pick a random bad performing fund and try to say that this doesn't work. So only show us the funds that are in the top fifth, per, or how do you say it? The 95th percentile of performance. So we thought, okay, that'll filter out all the garbage ones and we'll only see the best of the best in terms of performance. Well, that got us down to 44 different funds here. So same thing, we said years to inception, we wanna verify that, we want the all time returns and we wanna know any fees involved, which this doesn't include the front loaded fees, but we'll cover that here in just a moment. All right, we then went to growth and income. Same thing, we were just ultra specific about making sure there were no real Russian funds or something that could have gotten in the way or things you can't even buy anyways. So we filtered all of that out. We said, okay, we want uh, them to be 20 years or older, and we want to see only the best performing ones, which got us down to, this was quite a bit, this was 71 different funds here, but the same thing. We gathered the same information, put it all together. And finally, we went to the international funds. Now, international funds on a mutual funds perspective usually say world stock. That's how they're sort of filtered in there. That's how uh, Morningstar filters it. It's how any per fund prospectus is gonna put it on there. So just so you know, we're not playing any games there. Uh, that's how we filtered it. And we said, okay, 20 years or older, gotta show us the best of the best. And here's our best performing funds. Uh, of course, you could see they're old enough and everything uh, set up there. So. Then we took it over to a good old spreadsheet. <laughs> we put it the old fashioned way. And what we did is we said, okay, we wanna pick the best three performers there. Let's take the fees out of it for a second. Who cares what the fees are? Let's just see if the best performing funds in those categories can generate the returns that were expected. So you got dark green here is the best performing. The lighter green is the second. And then of course you got third. The goal was we were gonna build three different portfolios to see their performance over time. If it's highlighted in red, this is a front-loaded fund uh, that charges anywhere from five and a half percent up to five and three quarters percent as a front load. We do factor that in uh, as in our performance here that we're gonna show. Okay, let's go over to the charts. So I might have to kind of move these. Oh, I wanna show you everything here. So let me stretch this guy out as big as possible. And we'll bring it up a little bit because you need to be able to see everything, right? Go higher, higher, higher. Okay, perfect. So first thing we did is we said, let's take the first portfolio mix, the best performing fund uh, out of all of them in every category. Let's put those in a fund, 25% a piece, and let's see how they would have returned. We know we gotta go back at least 20 years because we have that much data. This goes back to 1990, or a little bit before that, if you can see it, hopefully you can see it there. And uh, so we put the growth of $10,000. They say somebody puts in $10,000, where would they be as of today relative to the market? So the first place fund uh, does well. You do better than the market, right? That's, that's where you're at there. Uh, annualized returns for the life of this investment, should you have chosen that, comes in at, let's call it 10%. 9.96%, uh, the market uh, return 9.72. So pretty good. You're just outpacing the market. No arguments there. Uh, it's not 12%, but no arguments there in terms of that return using the full span of what's available to us. Okay, uh, I'll take away this one. We went on to the second place where we took the second best performing fund uh, and we put those in the mix there. Uh, now accounting, of course, for fees and everything that are uh, involved in the mix there. And now this number looks a little different. You're gonna see the S&P changed a little bit. That's because the data is a little bit less. We couldn't go back as far, although this fund is, all of these funds are over 20 years old. There are some that are not older than others. And so the furthest that we can go back and calculate every fund's data in, uh, all together it looks like about 1990. Still plenty of time to get a good baseline uh, result here. So you can see the second place fund here does good uh, with the data provided, 11.55%. That's close enough to 12. I'll give it that, right? That works. Um, and you got uh, 10.23 uh, during the same time period if you invested at, at that 
time. You can also go back and say, all right, what about over the last 10 years, right? Markets return uh, 13%, and this fund basically returned the same as the market. Uh, we could do 20 years, 1999 and look back at that. So you can see, same thing there. A little bit better than market. It's not 12% averages, but I mean, it's it, given what the markets did, still pretty good. Uh, so that's the second place mix. All right, then we went on to the third place mix here. This would be the third best performer in each one of those categories that we covered there. And we want to go back as far as possible. There we go. And so you got about a 10.26% return relative to 9.91 with uh, the overall stock market. So basically 10%. So it's not 12%, but Still did good there. Uh, and so those are the, the three funds. If you put them all three on the map there together, uh, it should load. There we go. If you put them all three on the map there, you could see, okay, uh, we don't have any funds or any average that gets to the 12% or more, right? If you break down and try to cherry pick some of the years, you can do it. Uh, but we don't have a long-term trend of 12% or more. We still have respectable gains here, though. That's the big point. If you were trying to do a little bit better than the market, you did it in almost all of the funds. You know, the only reason you didn't do it in this one here is because the first the best performing funds uh, out of those four, uh, two of them were front loaded funds. And so you paid an average of 2.81% uh, in front loads plus the expense ratio. And so if those fees were taken out of play, you would have done a lot better, but unfortunately, what, what can you do? Uh, we then said, okay, what if we were budget conscious? What if, okay, we don't like the first place mix because that includes the front load funds. We don't like the second place mix. Maybe we just don't like it. I don't know. Uh, we don't like the third place mix. What if we chose only out of the top three, uh, these funds over here? Oh, it's going to be a little bit off. I'm sorry. Let's go back real quick. I want to make this really clear. What if we went back and we said, okay, this is a front loaded fund. Let's not use that one. The second place is a front loaded fund, but the third one is not. So what if we said, let's build a portfolio out of any of the funds that didn't have front loads on them, would that one do a little bit better? Maybe that's what he's talking about. Maybe he likes the, those ones there, but um, you know, maybe we shouldn't pay the fees, even though he mentions the um, front loaded funds. So we did what we call a fee conscious <laughs> mix of his funds there. And we got it set to max here. Let me stretch it out so you can see absolutely everything. Make it nice and big. Okay, there you go. So with a fee conscious mix, uh, now we're talking, right? So now we've got about a 10.83% return relative to the market. That's the widest spread, by the way, in terms of should I just invest in the index or should I go buy a bunch of mutual funds, Dave Ramsey style. Um, this was the biggest spread. So if we were fee conscious and we actually went away from the front loaded funds, we did better in the long run. These are also adjusted for dividends and everything along the way. So this includes absolutely every return possible. The S&P performance is the total return. It actually says right there, total return, every dividend included in its history, or at least as far back as we're looking, to account for this performance. So this is, at the end of the day, every dollar in there. So fee conscious uh, fund wins out. If I put the other three funds back on there, you'll see the color's gonna change actually. The fee conscious fund changes to the hot pink, which outperforms everything else. So what do you think? Is that enough? Do you agree with what the man is saying or have you found maybe it's not what you were thinking or it's better than you were thinking? At the end of the day, um, while it doesn't return the 12%, which I've heard him say numerous times, it's close enough, right? Get off his back. <laughs> All right? That's how I feel about that. Like, it's close enough. He's doing a good job. Um, he's got good suggestions out there. You can certainly choose other funds that did perform better. Uh, we could put any number of different mixes together that are not in those four categories that have better performances in the long term like this. Um, that might be a good follow-up video. But at the end of the day, you know, the people that bash him, there's the data, right? And you could pick on him by saying, oh, he's one, one in, what, one in the 1.12 percent off, 1.75 percent off, but come on, right? <laughs> he's doing a good service by having somebody do all that work for you, and we're just trying to help sort of solidify that and uh, share that performance with you. So let me know in the comments what you think. Are you going to bash me for this? Did I miss something? If I did, let's do it again. I have no problem doing this and uh, fine-tuning along the way, but uh, I just want to share that with you because uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, there's more than one way to invest. And if you disagree with the way he wants to invest and you agree with somebody else or you're working with us here at Jazz and we're doing better than that, okay, great. 
There's no wrong way to do it as long as you're investing for your goal. Don't go buy any of these funds you just saw on the screen because you think it's going to return, right? Buy them because you need those funds for your goal. Only invest for your goal. By the way, I should add, there was uh, quite a bit of volatility to be expected, more volatility than the overall market in every one of those funds. So in exchange for that greater return, you have to experience more downside, and you're going to. The first mix that I showed you, the max drawdown was 20.5%. You may not care about that. The uh, standard deviation of the returns, almost 14%. So you're going to you're gonna have to expect sort of a wide range there. The second one, max drawdown, 19.5%. Third one, 19% even. The uh, fee conscious one, 19.86%. So uh, I know it's a lot of numbers to throw at you, but know that if you do invest in those four funds, you're going to feel it. During the good times, you're going to be happy, but during the bad times, you almost have to look away, right? Don't get scared. Don't run away and blame Dave Ramsey for it. Just, you know, know it's going to be a little bit more volatile and, and that's it. So that's all I have for you. I hope you'll join us later for the Closing Beat Show. Uh, it, we do that every day to talk about the stock market, sharing stats and data like this with you. I like to take the opinion out of it when I can, but... Uh, we try to share data as much as possible, and we'll hope to bring a lot more of that to you. Let me know how we did, if there's something else we can improve on here and make this even better for you, or if there's some study you're interested in. We have data on literally everything on the planet at this point. Every stock, whether it's here or in Hong Kong, you name it, uh, we have the performance, every econ number and everything. So if there's something you've been wondering about something that somebody said, we could put the numbers down and show you what the actual result is. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching, and uh, for all that work, Maybe you'll hit the subscribe button. Maybe, you know, it's a red button. It's one click. Maybe you'll do it. I hope you'll do it. <laughs> See you later. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.